Welcome to the Radiant Preneur Rising Show with me, Jess Tomlinson. Interviews to inspire a new movement of leaders and entrepreneurs. The ones who lead with vulnerability and authenticity, stand in visibility, allowing themselves to truly be seen, are fierce and playful and sexy. Choose business as a spiritual practice. Seek collaboration versus competition. No giving back is not an option. It's a necessity. They do it their way. They radiate. They rise. Now, let's rise together. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the Radiant Preneur Rising Show. I'm Jess Tomlinson, and I'm so excited. I'm so stoked for today's show to interview my very dear, amazing, beautiful friend, Elizabeth Byron, or Denise Elizabeth Byron. Wow, I just like magically forgot your first name. That was weird. (laughs) She she has multiple names, so we're, uh, sorry about that, Denise. That's all right. Uh, Yeah, um, and Denise is an amazing woman that I met uh, when I first moved here in Santa Cruz, and so she's local here, and she's also lived where my partner Ben grew up in the Ashland area, and so uh, I kind of see this as like the full circle of us coming together in multiple different ways, so I'm so stoked to uh, chat with you more, Denise. Thanks. And I'm looking forward to it. And I love all of our connections, all the many little pieces that came into being so we could meet each other. And we had met each other on Facebook first, and then we got to meet in person, which I thought was really cool. Like, that's, that's a great way to use social media. Oh, my gosh, meet people. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I remember the, the first it's true. It's like my, it's pr- pretty much the only reason I really love social media that, that in videos. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I love that too, because I remember you had commented that you used to live in Ashland and I was there before Ben actually moved here to Santa Cruz. And then I came to one of your leader, um, leaders in your sensuous, um, wisdom practice. Um, Chin is her name. Uh, she's one of my dear friends too. Um, I came to her like kind of like launch event and you were just sitting over there. Like I remember you were just kind of like holding this beautiful space. I'm like, who is this woman? <laughs> and then you, I think you pointed out like, we actually know each other. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're Denise. So, so I, cool. I loved it, that. And I loved that you had been in Ashland and you know, I, would, I lived there for 14 years, so I have yeah. such a network of amazing, beautiful women up there that that's really where sensuous wisdom has its roots, actually, some of their roots, and yeah. at least for me. And so when I brought it down to Santa Cruz, um, that was sort of the plan, like somehow all the worlds would magically integrate. And so when you were up in Ashland, I could really feel that energy happening. It was really mm. fun. Mm. Yay. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. And I also just want to say uh, that I just love the synchronicities. So I'm just like bringing up all these things so that people can kind of get an understanding, right, of like how we're connected and um, hopefully for their own lives, like realize that neat things like this happen. But your name came up at uh, Nahal's event. I was me and Ben were videoing it this past weekend and she mentioned you as her teacher and brought forward some of your wisdom that she'd learned uh, from you in studying with you. So I just, I was, I was excited knowing that we were going to be having this conversation today. Great. Me too. Great. Awesome. Well, let's dive in with the only question that I like to ask, which is how are you right now pushing your own visibility edges? in your business or your life or wherever you want to go with it? That is such an interesting question. I'm writing it down in case anyone's wondering because I I think with my hands and a pen, which happens to be gold right now, um, (laughs) um, how am I pushing my visibility? Um, This is good. It's very good. So my first response is interesting. My first response is not to push but to attract. Mm. 
So a reworking of that question is the first thing that happens for me. So we can just dive in right there. So visibility is such an important part of all of our lives, whether we're entrepreneurs or we're working in the world for other people, because how we, um, how we're seen, how we're connected with, how people um, view us uh, can make a big difference. And this is, and I know you're, you're absolutely coming at this from the deepest place too. This isn't about image yeah. as it relates to what you want people to think of you, mm -hmm. but how I want to be seen and, and to be seen authentically. Mm -hmm. um, that has always been an edge. So I'm going to start with that. So is Great. that good? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I love it. So the reason I'm going to start there is to be seen authentically for me means um, to let people know who I am, let people see what I have to offer, and to allow myself to be vulnerable. And mm -hmm. those are the three things that really show up immediately. And from a young, young age, I did a lot of hiding. And mm -hmm. this is probably not unusual for a lot of people you know, because so many people you know are highly sensitive. Yeah. I did a lot of hiding of what I could do. Um, when I was eight, I started to see uh, people who had crossed over on the other side. Mm -hmm. I had some, uh, you know, very sad situations happen with a best friend who was killed in a car crash, mm -hmm. with my grandmother dying, my cat dying all happening really close together. And on the one hand, very sad, but on the other hand, as a part of, I guess, the path that I was destined to walk, mm -hmm. um, my grandmother appeared to me very quickly after she passed away. And mm -hmm. from that moment on, I was able to really see things other people weren't seeing. And I don't think that I'm the only one who can see them. Obviously, I believe everyone has access Mm -hmm. But as I learned really quickly, not everybody wanted to. And so then become, you know, then that path of hiding yeah. what I could do and who I am started. And that's mm -hmm. not uncommon with people who are highly intuitive. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, or sensitive. It, it's just a way we cope with getting through life. And so I sort of, as I moved into my adult life, by the time I was 33, it's <laughs> a long time, I realized maybe it might be a good idea to share more of those gifts. And I had been sharing them with friends and people who were close to me for a yeah. while. And so when I was 33, um, I moved to Ashland. That's when I moved there yeah. and began a 14-year journey of really deepening into how I could be of service using the intuitive gifts, the astrology, the numerology, and then ultimately what became sensuous wisdom and working with women to really look at their own intuition, both embodied and cosmically. Um, mm -hmm. And when I moved back here seven years ago, so don't do the math, people. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do the math. Denise has a lot of <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> a lot of wisdom. No. Um, you do. When I moved back here seven years ago, <laughs> it was really scary because I was starting my life over from scratch and I knew I needed to be visible. Mm. So I had spent all those years be being very internal and doing my work and seeing clients, but it was very, it was all referral based. Everything mm -hmm. I did was referral based. So I moved to Santa Cruz and I realized, <laughs> I can't be referral based anymore. So pushing my <laughs> edges. So for the last seven years, I've been really pushing my edges, which my edge is I would really just love it to, to just be myself and have people knock on the, well, maybe not literally knock on the door, but find me and call me. They can call me, not knock on the door. But um, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the sensitive part of me, the vulnerable part of me, the part of me mm -hmm. that needs that quiet and that, um, deep reflection in order to do what it, what it is I do, um, yeah. ha has struggles with being seen, um, mm -hmm. needing to be seen, putting those edges um, right in front of me all the time. And so 
how do I push? The, you know, it's interesting. I don't, I don't like to push, but some people would say I'm kind of pushy. Um, <laughs> one of the ways that I allow myself to reach the edge is mm -hmm. um, I'm the president of Team Women, which is a networking group in Santa Cruz. And mm -hmm. um, it's hilarious because everyone in the group knows that I, you know, we have these 30 second pitches that you say about who you are. Mm -hmm. You're very familiar yeah. with this. I know you and everybody knows this. I've been doing. I hate those. Okay. By well, the way, oh my god, I hate them. <laughs> well, it's hilarious because I, every time I stand up, I've been doing this for almost seven years now, right? Every time yeah. I stand up, I'm like, really? I can't remember what it is I do, who I am, what the benefits. <laughs> so it kind of cracks me up, and I'm um, I'm yeah. very aware of the beauty of what you do and how you really bring women into a place where it's natural and men too. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're exclusively working with women, but I know that through women, I um, bringing that inner radiance out so that we yeah. just naturally express who we are. So I'm constantly yeah. long winded answer to your question, but I'm constantly pushing my visibility edges because mm -hmm. I do, I do value my private time. I value my privacy. Yeah. Um, I do things that are unusual um, that can be difficult to explain to people sometimes. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's, a, it's pretty much an edge all the time for me. Mm. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love it. There's so many things that I'm hearing in that, that I like want to impact. I'm just like, I'm sitting in it thinking, oh my gosh, where do I go from here? Cause there's so many. So I just want to acknowledge and then you can choose kind of where you want to go. Um, but the first thing I heard that I, I really love, and I don't know if I've ever heard anybody say this, um, is those three things that you like to do kind of, it sounded like immediately when you meet people maybe is like, tell them who you are mm -hmm. and then what you offer. And then I don't remember exactly how you put it, but something about like have like some sort of like connection, like vulnerable mm -hmm. connection, you know, mm -hmm. sync into that. So I love that. And I don't think I've ever heard somebody say like that that's an intention that they have. This is who I am. So I'm curious about that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I love is um, this kind of like sh dynamic that you had that I think a lot of us, as you acknowledge, go through, especially as sensitive um, people and I never considered myself a sensitive being like a you know intuitive or sensitive or uh, you know highly sensitive um, as a child uh, but I think I was and I was just mm -hmm. really good at adapting exactly. so I never understood that I was that mm -hmm. until actually just the last few years after mm -hmm. my best friends died Right. especially when Mary Jane died, my, my super close friend, and I was there. And then all of a sudden I started having, and we can kind of go into this because I'm curious your thoughts on it, but I started having like really crazy psychic experiences. Mm -hmm. Like, like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and like emotion-based for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I can feel that. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, mm -hmm. wow. And so yeah. it's been this interesting thing for me of of now understanding what it's like to be present to that sensitivity in the the aspect of what I help people with mm -hmm. in being more visible, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm curious how you have been able to transform that. I don't like to say dealt with, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I like, yeah, how you've been able to transform that or like feel into that. Um, mm -hmm. And then I guess those are the main two things that I heard mm -hmm. that are really interesting. Mm -hmm. There's a few other things. So mm -hmm. wherever you want to go from there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. I'd like to start with being present to the, the sensitivity part because mm -hmm. I want to tie this into your work and to my work at the same time. One of the things that I like to bring up with the sensuous wisdom work, which is a way for women to to utilize their power center in their body, um, yeah. one that's filled with love and creativity. It's really fabulous is to establish a connection with their yoni, which is a Sanskrit mm -hmm. word for the whole reproductive area, usually just the pelvic floor area, but can include the whole reproductive area for a woman. But yoni for me stands for your own natural intuition. Hmm. Ooh, I love that. Did you make yeah. that up? Yes, I did. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So what I've, what I've learned over the years is that when women are really tapped in deeply, okay, mm -hmm. and 
this is really, again, this is a part and parcel of your work. You mm -hmm. want your people to tap in deeply to who they are. And, yeah. you know, utilizing the practices that you have, that I have, asking people to really drop into their bodies and to be embodied is the mm -hmm. first part of it for me. And then the next part is to understand our sensitivities, to understand intuition. And mm -hmm. what is intuition? So when I say your own natural intuition, I'm really talking about literally an embodied intuition that feels something, that senses something, that's present, that creates mm -hmm. a magnetic field um, around us so that we can either invite in someone or not. You know, I think that's a really mm -hmm. important piece for visibility, right? As yes as women and men become more visible, what's the invitation? You know, mm. what's that mm. invitation? And so understanding your own natural intuition, understanding the embodiment of who you are, what are the boundaries? What are the parameters? And so yeah. this has been the hardest path for me. So this really goes to your question um, of transformation. I would honestly say I'm still in the process of that. Mm -hmm. Because as, you know, um, I was very shy until about eighth grade, thanks to a lovely English teacher, which is why that was one of my incarnations in this oh, life. Oh, awesome. English teacher. Um, Go but, teachers. Yay. Yeah, thanks to an uh, eighth grade English teacher. Um, she really brought me out of my shell. Mm -hmm. And what did that mean? It meant really allowing my gifts to shine. And so how that happened in that context in eighth grade English class, um, or actually maybe it was, yeah, no, it was eighth grade, um, was writing a play uh, <laughs> and being it. able to direct the play and wow. casting different people in the parts. And then I had a small part in the play, just, you know, I had to have a little cameo. But um, <laughs> having an ability to share a story about yeah. a young girl who was sensitive and going through a hard time. And this, and, and it, I mean, when I, I won't go into the whole play, but this whole play, she, she let me write it, she let me produce it, direct it, and it was shared with all the kids in the school. Now that mm -hmm. for a really shy person was like the perfect opportunity to come out of the shell behind there. So I thought about that I don't know, I probably think about that several times a week because I think as someone who wants to share, I, I love work. I love my work. I love what I get to do in this lifetime. I love my purpose. I want other people to feel really good about their purpose, their contribution, um, their sensitivities, their intuition, all of it. But no one can do that if I don't come out from behind the veil, so to speak. Like, yeah. you know, I, if I don't do that. So I do work with this a lot because I am, I am, nobody believes this, but I really am shy. Yeah. Being vulnerable is, is a whole thing. And so when you were speaking about your friend and when you were there and you were, she was passing, mm -hmm. um, the world's opened. The veil mm -hmm. between the worlds opened to you in a way that it hadn't yet in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And there are times in everybody's life where that will happen. Um, most notably for women, it can happen during the birth of a baby. Yeah. It's the same veil. It's, in my opinion, it's the same veil between yeah. worlds, right? It it's is. the birth of a baby, death of a loved one. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much, and it's, you know, it, it could be even death of a pet. It, it really, it's the level of grief. Mm -hmm. And I know this sounds really strange because we're all about celebrating and radiance, but literally. No, it doesn't. It doesn't to me. Yeah. Okay, great. So the grief, whenever I work with um, women <laughs> in my programs and, and individually, almost everybody gets a copy of Honoring Grief which is written mm. by um, Alexandra Kennedy, who's one of the foremost leading experts on grief. And she lives in our area. So we're very lucky to have her. Oh, but wow. this idea of honoring the depth of grief helps keep that portal open. Mm. So when you have that experience with your friend, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but... That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You opened up that level of connection 
to yeah. what, what else is possible, what else I can't see. And I would mm -hmm. be really curious what has happened, if you're willing to share if there's sure. a, an experience, I'd love to know more. Yeah. About. Yeah. Thanks for asking because I really appreciate it, you know, and for everybody watching, like, you just have so much wisdom. I think, you know, when we met up, we met up at uh, this, um, a delicious chocolate place that Denise yes. told me about and now I'm like obsessed with. <laughs> we just yeah. saw each other again last Friday um, called Mutari for anybody here in um, Santa Cruz. But um, when we were chatting there, like I just, yeah, I could have talked to you forever. So I'm so grateful we get this know, fun recorded fun. to share. Um, it's like our private for, conversation. I'm I know, that. totally. So thanks for asking because I think this is really important for, you know, anybody who is is sharing their wisdom in the world because it, it is I just read this like um email actually from a woman that I follow uh, another uh, Elizabeth I know it's your middle name but uh, Elizabeth Dialto um and she was talking about how you know so often we think of like life and business as separate but as the type of entrepreneurs that we are sharing our message it is it is so intertwined and so when things happen, such as the death, the death of a loved one, right? Like it really impacts us in our business and our life, who we are. And that impacts our um, ability to be vulnerable perhaps and visible and all that stuff. So um, I just wanted to presence kind of like, you know, how this relates. Um, and after Mary Jane died, I had two, I've had two, actually three, now that I think of it, three very distinct experiences that I was like, oh my God, like I felt that and then it happened. Um, so the first one was um, one night, gosh, I can't even remember the month now. I'm not really like a linear time person, so I don't really remember when this happened. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. I'm like, sometime, I can't remember exactly mm -hmm. what month it was. Um, yeah. But I was talking to Ben, so uh, it was before December, <laughs> because he moved here in <laughs> December. Um, but I was talking to him on the phone, mm -hmm. and I got off the phone, and I just had this like deep sadness. Mm -hmm. And I started crying hysterically. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God. And then I started having all these fears about our relationship. But then part of me was like, is this really about our relationship? Like, I'm so confused. And I had this wave of emotions and I just kept hearing this voice and it was like midnight. And, you know, and he's very good about like not answering his phone when he's sleeping. So I was like, oh, he's going to be asleep if I try to call him back. But I kept hearing this voice like, you know, just call him back, call him back. So I did. He talked me through, you know, the emotions. We talked about our relationship because that's all I thought it was at the time. And then we got off the phone. The next morning, he calls me on FaceTime, which we never really did in the morning. So I knew it had to be something because the look on his face mm -hmm. was like, and he said, uh, have you seen the news? And I was like, no. And he goes, there was this huge shooting in Vegas, oh, right. which everybody, you know, like people who followed me for a while know that I lived mm -hmm. there for 10 years. Right. Well, turns out literally that same time that the shooter opened on the horrific massacre was when I was bawling my head off. Yeah. Oof. <sighs> yeah. Every, every bit of me is just has chills. Oh That's my God. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, yeah. I mean, I was, I was, I'm still so devastated by that. And every time I go back, I can just feel how different it is there. Um, now, like I can just feel the grief and the sadness and like, there's, I have a very special connection to the desert. I'm realizing since I moved here to the ocean, um, the desert keeps like reminding me how near and dear she is to my heart. And um, so that was one thing. The second thing um, was, and I won't tell like the long story because I could just like tell all the details of these, but I want to make this about, point this back to you. The second thing was we were driving to my um, parents' place in uh Washington and um, I started crying about my dog Zeus mm -hmm. who I had made the really tough decision to give up for adoption before I moved here I actually made the tough decision about two dogs I had two dogs at the time but Zeus had been with me since he was a baby and he was about like 10 years old when I gave him up and I still have a lot of guilt around letting him go yeah. um, 
but I was crying just like out of nowhere. We were getting really close to my parents' house. So I was like, well, maybe this is about like getting close to my parents' house. I just started crying about Zeus. And I was like having all these fears like, oh my God, what if he's dead? Like, you know, what if I, I gave him up to this horrible like family and just like all this stuff. And two days later, um, my, my mom gets a call. My dad gets a call. I get a call. My dad was the only one that answered the call because he's great. Look, he's great like that. Yeah. And he passes the phone to me, and it is um, a Las Vegas veterinary hospital that says, we have Zeus here. They, we found him. Somebody found him wandering. And I was like, I love this. Oh, my God. Like, so, yeah, I'm pretty sure he wasn't wandering for that long because it was literally like yeah. a couple days okay. later. But I, he must have just heard my psychic message. Like, mm -hmm. I need to know you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then what happened? Oh, my God. Okay. So then um, basically it was an opportunity because the chip was still connected to me, my information. The new owners hadn't switched it over. Mm -hmm. Basically, I had to reach out to the adoption agency. They connected me to the new family. Yeah. Um, so I was able to find out that like, I, I didn't get to talk to them, but I got their phone number, like without even their permission. It was just hilarious. And so yeah. I ended up finding out that, you know, they had come the night before and grabbed him. Thank goodness from the, um, Good. from the vet. Mm -hmm. He was, they specifically told me he was very excited to see them. So that warms my heart. Yeah. Um, and then I was able through the encouragement of Ben to text the owners and say, hi, I'm, thank you so much. Aww. This is who I am. And then they texted me photos back Aww. and it turned, so I got to see him and I got to see that he's part of this like dachshund family because he's a wiener <laughs> dog. So now he's like, which is hilarious to me because he was definitely one of those dogs that like did not want to be around any other dogs. <laughs> like, so I'm he's like, happy. He but he's so happy. Oh, yeah. Awesome. That's so yeah. Good. Yeah. So that was like the second thing. And then there was like a, a random third thing, but I, you know, I could go on probably, but those, well, uh, there was like three main things. That's, I mean, and those, I think the first one, I, I mean, the second one is so clear. Like that was a, he probably needed your support if he was off wandering. So that was a connection of support yeah. that maybe led him to where he would be found. Um, and a connection of support for you. So you'd know how he is. So that feels yeah. really good. And then the first one, I really want to ask you this question. Um, this is what I would do with, um, women that I'm working with. This is a, th that was a huge, tremendous, traumatic, um, experience for your friends, for your family, for people, you know, people you consider yeah. your family. Um, and you were tuned in. Mm. So the question, and you don't have to answer this, but the question that lies beneath that for me is what do you think the purpose of your being tuned in was mm. and is? Mm. Because for me, anytime we're delving into these realms, um, which people, one of my mentors who was a very famous psychic in the, uh, Southern California, she used to say, supernatural is natural. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love supernatural, that. so that's her thing. Supernatural is natural. And indeed, you know, mm -hmm. if it's not practical, if there's not a purpose, then what, why? Then what, what is the point, right? And that's yeah. my Taurus nature going, so if I'm going to be able to see this, feel this, hear this, know this, yeah. sense this, not really know why I'm crying in the middle of the night, but then mm -hmm. find out the next day, yeah. um, what do we do with that? Mm. What do we do with that gift? What do you do with the empathy? What do you do with the consciousness that you carry? Um, are you part of a healing grid, if you will, that extends out beyond Las Vegas because you weren't there. So, yeah. you know, where, what happens? And so that, mm -hmm. those are the bigger questions. And, um, yeah. you know, are you, are you potentially, because you do work with people from Las Vegas, their grief, whether it's expressed or not expressed, affects the field in which mm -hmm. you're working privately or in a group. So how does, you know, see how all those questions 
Right. Yeah. yeah. So, That's so good. That is so yeah. good. Cause I, I hadn't really, you know, asked myself that I've definitely asked myself, um, my light is like so crazy in here. <laughs> it's um, very exciting. It's yeah, like going I in know, and out getting, of the world. I'm getting closer so you can like, so I'm not like. I know. I, I know. I <laughs> know. I put the computer a little further away so I wouldn't be like in your face the whole time. Like, have me that but you're you look great you should just <laughs> <laughs> sorry everybody if I'm going like in and out of darkness and like but my face is that's too kind of, but it's what we're talking about though. isn't that interesting whoa yeah, yeah. it's what we're talking about because yeah. life is filled with so many experiences we can't explain um yeah. and life does apparently <laughs> have suffering involved <laughs> <laughs> I love your snorts. Can I just say I love your snorts? Oh my well, gosh, okay. they make me so happy. That's good because they just <laughs> happen. So I have a Sagittarius moon and today's the Sagittarius full moon. Yeah, and can we talk about it? Yeah, so Sagittarius is like, let's have a party. Let's be optimistic. Let's stay in our possibilities and our positivity. Yeah. Um, it's not that Sagittarians don't feel grief or suffering. It's just that there's a yeah. natural inclination for what's more positive, what is freeing yeah. up. Um, I and, love Sagittarius. Some of my well, very best friends are like, we can just like ride high to the moon together. <laughs> See? And, and so every sign has a purpose. So Sagittarius mm. follows Scorpio. And Scorpio, of course, is all about death and rebirth mm. and transformation and going deep and into the mystery and into the dark and la, la, la. Yeah. So the Sagittarius energy pulls us out of the dark, just like you're going back and forth, right? Mm. Pulls us into the light again and allows us to take what we've learned in the dark, in the mystery, in the mm. depths of the grief. Um, and and shifts and changes that happen in our lives it the sagittarius energy allows us to cultivate our faith so sagittarian mm. energy is not just about optimism and positivity but it's about cultivating faith mm. and a philosophy of life and learning that supports who we are in the world and what we're here to do so and then of course after sagittarius is capricorn and mm -hmm. Capricorn energy wants us to put it to work. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you've gone through the mystery. You've, you've created a faith and possibility and, and optimism. Now get to work. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I love that. And then we get to Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And what is Aquarius? Aquarius is like, great, we'll get to work, but we need to, we need to, we need to get out and meet all the people. We need to reach <laughs> all the people, not just about here. It's about here. And so, and then yeah. it goes from there. So mm -hmm. today's moon is really an opportunity, I think, for us to look back. What, what have we gone through? Where mm -hmm. are we right now? Um, and, and really look at our optimism and our faith. Really look at where we, where we want to bring more joy into yeah. our world, into the worlds of others. Um, so yeah, so it's a great it's a great day. The full moon illuminates and reflects. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if you saw it last night, but it was so beautiful and I so did it. Cool. yeah. Um, and just so just so you guys know, um, today is uh, May 29th, the day that we're right. recording this. So so sorry that you're not experiencing this in real time, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all good. You can still use the energy. You know, it's yeah. just the realization that every time. Um, we have a cosmic event, which happens every second of the day, but big mm -hmm. cosmic events um, activate something in us. And that's why when I'm reading charts and mm -hmm. I'm looking at the transits, like what's happening right now, it's like, oh, this, this, is, your, this is your map. This is the, the map that was given to you at birth. But here's the things that are being activated today. Here's mm -hmm. the journey you're on right now. So today... Mm -hmm we want to bring this positivity in and we want to bring in this faith and we can yeah. do that every day. It's not just limited to today, but I it's, love a, it's that. a good day to talk about it. So I love that so much. I'm curious, like for you, cause I, I still, I love that question, you know, of, of when something does happen, mm -hmm. it's like, what is the purpose of this? What is mm -hmm. this for? Have mm -hmm. you had a time in your life that you'd like to share about where you've had something happen and you've had to ask yourself that question and what did you do with that? 
I'm curious. Yeah, that, that, that happens to me pretty frequently. And I'm, I'm trying mm -hmm. to reach back into my memory banks to think of what, when I do this. Um, you know, the, the first one that comes there, two that come to mind. One was, I don't remember years like you. I'm, I, I remember it was probably March of mm. some year. <laughs> yeah, some year. Maybe 2011, <laughs> but um, I was feeling really antsy and, and not feeling myself, right? Mm. Not feeling myself and feeling just waves of energy and angst. Now, some might say, well, isn't that kind of like how you always are? Well, kind of, but it was more <laughs> than normal. And um, the energies were really literally surging through me. And I felt mm. really off balance. I felt really off balance, like more than normal. <laughs> Yeah. And I couldn't attribute it to perimenopause back then. So I knew that it was something more. So I like to use tarot cards or oracle cards. Um, mm, when, yeah. when I get stuck, um, those are a good way for me to sort of check in. And I use my intuition. Sometimes I'll look at the books. Um, but I've been reading tarot cards since I was eight years old. So oh, my gosh. I know. <laughs> a long story there. <laughs> But I didn't know how to read, but I knew how to read tarot cards. I had a wow. reading ability. So tarot cards were just this really great way for me to connect in. Anyway, so that day I pulled one out of uh, one of the sacred geometry decks by Francine Hart. And I don't honestly remember the name of the card, but what I, what I um, remember was the picture on the card was of this huge wave. It was a, almost like a Japanese art print. Well, it was like a Japanese art print of this huge mm. wave coming over the shore and this little tiny tree that was about to be covered with this yeah. wave. And the tsunami happened in Japan. Wow. And I knew. And, you know, okay, so that's another yeah. event. It's cataclysmic. So what to say about that? Well, <clears throat> When you're sensitive, you're tuned into all the energies, the earth energies, um, you're tuned into other people's energies, animals' energies, all of it. And mm -hmm. so even if it's before an event or during an event or even after an event, we're tuning into the energy of that. And so mm -hmm. when I realized what had happened, because I didn't know right away, you know, I didn't mm -hmm. know about that. The first thing I did was to just sit down, ground, and ask for some guidance. Is there mm -hmm. anything I can do? And the word prayer has so many different meanings. So I'm, I'm always hesitant to say pray, but the idea of praying, or I guess the way I would see it, especially for that, is just becoming an open vehicle for love to just pour to wherever it needed to go. Mm -hmm. um, that to me is a form of prayer, you know, just really opening ourselves up. And for some of my mentors, their jobs are very clear. They help people cross over um, souls that mm -hmm. haven't done that yet. They will, that's part of the work that they do. I've done that a few times in my life. I'm totally open to it if that's what needs to happen. But in that moment, it was more about sitting very clearly, solidly on the earth and knowing that things had changed radically because mm. that tsunami and the um, nuclear power plant and all of that was about to radically shift our well-being on the planet because of the radioactivity that was going to go out into the oceans and affect the ocean life. So mm -hmm. I found myself just being drawn into the ocean and mm -hmm. not literally, but, you know, in a yeah. vision. Um, and just asking for protection and support for mm -hmm. the creatures there and of course offering love and and whatever I could do for the people who had um, died for people who were harmed and there was that was a very dramatic um, example um, I'm sure there are really happy examples but it's always the dramatic mm -hmm. ones no I yeah. love it because yeah. It, yeah because it's like those I, I think sometimes the more dramatic examples mm -hmm. are more eye-opening for, mm -hmm. especially for people that don't experience or aren't as in touch, you know. Mm -hmm. um, here I go going in and out of the dark. I know, you're going in and out of the dark. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think it's important. And what I love about 
your example is I think so many times we can get, especially in our Western culture, right? So I, I would love to hear you riff on this. We can get so hooked into like, I need to physically do something mm -hmm. versus like, the power of just, you know, not always, I mean, you know, my God, if like somebody is like literally abusing somebody in front of you, you no. better not just sit there and like pray, you know, like do something. But yeah. the power of just going within ourselves is oftentimes dismissed. And I think that is one of the things that I'm most passionate. And I know you probably are too, about connecting people mainly women back to their inner wisdom inside first yeah whether it's like you know for healing the planet or it's for what direction do i need to go in my business mm -hmm. and uh i know like personally i'm i'm struggling right now to get back into that because now i have a partner in my life like permanently <laughs> and i'm like you're messing up my like intuitive flow over here. Cause I think I'm so mixed up in like your stuff. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, that's a big one too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm curious like what your thoughts are as far as like going inside or, you know, if you just want to riff on that. Yeah, no, I think we're, we're totally in alignment um, with that because ultimately, and this comes from years of different trainings and all kinds of things, learning, pretty much the opposite way I've, I've, that I was living. I mean, I was definitely coming from a place of, and I still have this with my partner. How can I help? Mm -hmm. How can I help? And he's like, whoa, you know, just give me some space. I, I'm good, you know. It's, there's a need almost sometimes to help. And that's mm -hmm. the part that I've learned is not super healthy in my, mm -hmm. in my self. The mm -hmm. coming back to oneself first, A, gives whatever space is needed either it's for a message from somewhere else or from a person um mm -hmm. in front of you or around you to to let them breathe and to let the universe bring in the message right mm -hmm. instead of assuming i know what needs to be done or instead of assuming i know what the universe wants me to do mm -hmm. if i step mm -hmm. back a little bit and listen and in order to listen i need to get in my body and this is what I teach. Not everybody believes this, but I really believe in embodiment. I believe yeah. get into my body. I'm on the earth. I'm a human being. I'm in a body. So let's get in it and yeah. breathe. <laughs> let's get in yeah. and breathe. Um, and then dropping into the womb space, you know, for women particularly, although there's, you know, men have a lower dantian. It's part of every culture except for this one teaches about this. This is why we need to have more teaching around this. But dropping into our, our womb space, mm -hmm. it connects us to our power center. And mm -hmm. if, we're, if we're up here or up here or up here, you know, mm -hmm. we might be really intuitive. We might have a lot to say. We might have a big heart. But yeah. if we're not connected all the way down into our womb space, we, are, we don't have as much energy. We don't have as much support. We don't yeah. have as much to bring to whatever it is we will be asked to do. And that yeah. asked to do might be to sit quietly and hold the space, create mm. a container, um, pray, whatever, you know, whatever words, meditate. There's a lot of power in meditation, which we've seen scientifically now. I mean, that's the beauty mm. of living this long is that many of the things that were considered alternative and experimental um, even 30 years ago, have now been proven to be scientifically, like meditating creates a change in the electromagnetic yeah. fields that helps the individual. But when enough people gather in a room or in a huge location to meditate, it changes the energy. You know, yeah. and people in churches have known this their way forever. That's yeah. why people gather, right? They sing, they pray. There's a shift in energy. It helps yeah. everybody in attendance, hopefully. I mean, <laughs> if they're willing, if they're yeah, willing, well, right? Yeah. And also, therein lies my skepticism about certain things. <laughs> but that's, um, I've had a lot of experience in that too. But this idea of coming back home, you know, coming yeah. back home and being available and being um, willing to be of service, what is that going to look like? And that can be so many different things. So, power in yourself 
accessing your own natural intuition, your own mm -hmm. natural intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. Your own natural mm -hmm. inspiration. It's all coming back to Yoni. It's all coming back to getting in touch with this beautiful part of your body, with yourself, and really dropping in. You know, mm -hmm. our life force energy lives there and that's what we cultivate that's what kundalini yoga cultivates mm -hmm. there's a life force that's what qigong um cultivates and nourishes yeah. so yeah. sensuous wisdom is that for women and that's really what it is yeah. it's a it's a cultivation of that so as you drop into your inner wisdom as you drop deeply you mm -hmm. can bring that up to your beautiful heart your voice mm -hmm. your intuition yeah. so that's the that's for me the most important thing, having power in yourself and understanding that you can trust your intuition and trust your knowing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not easy sometimes, especially in those dramatic situations. Mm -hmm. um, it, and I can just attest to, there's been plenty of times where I haven't sat back, um, mm -hmm. where I've wanted, and, and you're right, like if there's an immediate situation, obviously you take care of it. Like we're talking about like world events or a death in the family mm -hmm. or something that your friend calls you and you're on the other end of the phone. Instead of trying to reach her through the phone line, sit back, drop mm -hmm. down, connect, mm -hmm. breathe. You'll be of more support to her that way mm -hmm. than um, if you run over to her house in that moment. Yeah. You know? And, and what, do you, what do you think it takes to trust in that way? Because I think that trust is like this huge topic that mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> I've debated sometimes just literally teaching like a whole course on trust because I right. feel like we could go forever. Yeah, it's a good um, idea. Yeah. So what do you think it, it takes, especially as women, to mm -hmm. trust? That's, That's a big a question. Good question. <laughs> um, What's a good place to start? <laughs> conception. <laughs> uh, uh, seriously. Um, birth. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go all the way to conception of birth um, yeah. for all people, actually. You know, wow. I am not, I'm actually not kidding. I was sort of joking, but I'm not. Going mm. back to how, how we're conceived, you know, conscious conception. Um, yeah. love, uh, birth, uh, conscious mm -hmm. birth, conscious, you know, raising of children, um, mm -hmm. with love and, and guidelines and all the things that are needed. Trust is a, I think trust, trust is probably innate in our soul. This is a really big question because it's, it yeah. brings up a lot of other questions like where does trust really begin? You know, the, mm -hmm. in a sense, if we believe in a bigger universe, if we believe in higher power, if we believe in reincarnation, mm -hmm. even if we don't believe in reincarnation, but we believe that we have a soul mm -hmm. and we, our soul trusted that we would go on this path, this journey, this lifetime, yeah. uh, that trust in the, the greater consciousness, creator, God, whatever you want to call it, that's the, that's the for me, that trust is the one that if that's not in place, it's hard to build trust in humans if yeah. you don't have something else underneath yeah. it, right? And trust in yourself too. Totally. Like I found that that is, I feel like my self-trust has been extremely high for most of my life. And I'm really grateful to that mm -hmm. because I know a huge part of that is how I grew up in the sense of I had safety, I had food, I didn't have to worry about things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I acknowledge that that's, you know, my white privilege and the privilege of the environment that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people don't have that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was a huge part of it um, mm -hmm. for me, but for people that don't have a lot of trust, you know, maybe like, because I agree with you, I think it's multifaceted. I think you have to agree in something or trust in something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then there's this layer of self-trust. And then there's this mm -hmm. layer of like trust with other people. Right. Um, yeah. And even like trusting the physical earth, like the earth will support me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm curious, like your thoughts around when people feel like it's hard to trust. Mm -hmm. Like, how do they establish maybe that first connection with something bigger than themselves, God, the universe, right. goddess? 
It's such a good question because I know that my childhood started off with <clears throat> a lack of safety and a lack of food, um, a lack of stability, um, mm. you know, without going into the story of that, um, and violations of all kinds. Mm. Um, so there was very little trust in me for <clears throat> life honestly mm -hmm. like here i was this small child going through all of these experiences that i don't think any child should ever have to go through and certainly they weren't the worst ones that i've heard about since then but they were yeah. pretty bad and what i did and this is the sagittarius moon to kind of bring it back to what i think i was given innately mm -hmm. was this beautiful trust that something better was out there Mm. something better and I, I I still have my diaries from when I was young and every entry after I would write the difficult things that had happened I'd write I believe there is something better waiting for me and I didn't mm. mean like death and beyond like the Puritan yeah. you know if you were as Americans um, North Americans were steeped in a lot of Puritan history, which is mm. to say you suffer, die, and then you get your reward. So I yeah. wasn't buying into that per se. I really felt like there was better in this lifetime. Yeah. Where did that come from? That I think was innate. And so when we're working with people where even that can't, is hard, it's like finding something, anything that you know you can trust and it mm. might be that the sun is going to come up tomorrow. I mean, I know that sounds yeah. a little cliche, but I no, think sometimes I the natural cycles of, of our world, if we can't find trust in other ways, we're going to mm -hmm. find trust in a natural cycle. That's why mm. I think we're embodied. Um, and the sun so far has come up every day. So that's like the one <laughs> thing. I know. Now, yeah. you know, please don't change that. But um, yeah. Yeah, that is the one thing I can say that has been true. And so that's where I think a lot of people lean into natural mm -hmm. science because it is yeah. trustworthy. Um, and then where do you take it from there to bring it back to yourself for your own inner knowing? Mm -hmm. There's a journey. And I think... And it's, it's helped along by people like you. It's helped along by people like me. It's helped along with art, poetry, and music. Mm. <clears throat> I think much of the blending, you know, you have science, which has a very powerful place in our world, but not to forget all the arts, because art is where our soul really lives I feel like not now some scientist is going to tell me that's not entirely true and that's fine but the <laughs> blending of science and art or the reminder that you know our artists are mm -hmm. those are our sensitive people not that scientists aren't sensitive too <clears throat> but artists are sensitive in another way and the poetry the music um, the performances everything yeah. that comes out of the artistic world can help heal in my opinion, yes, that I trust, do. you know, yeah. and it's one step at a time. It really, truly is. I mean, these are very cliche sounding, but it really does have to be sometimes for some people one moment at a time. You know, my journey of trust, it has been back and forth and up and down. And <clears throat> there are days I have really bad days mm -hmm. where I'm mm -hmm. like, not sure. And it, and I, you know, one thing I will say, though, it's interesting. When you have a pet, sometimes mm. that love you have because you brought up Zeus, which mm. is an interesting name, um, <laughs> by the way. I was, dating, I was dating a guy named Hercules at the time when I got him. Are you him. serious? Like, for real? For real name. Like, wow. apparently his mom named him that because he was a very strong kicker in the belly. Nice. Well, good for and him. He, yeah, good for him. Thank goodness he wasn't, like, short, scrawny guy. He was, like, <laughs> a tall, buff dude. <laughs> Can you imagine? <clears throat> Hercules. Um, yeah. But the love, love. Love is a mm -hmm. big healer, right? So that, you know, we yeah. can start small if we need to. If there's a pet, <clears throat> that's one of the beautiful pieces I think about the animal kingdom is that the return of love is mm -hmm. so profoundly unconditional. Cats have a whole other thing, um, but I, they're <laughs> It and sounds I like we have them. similar. <laughs> yeah. I love cats. They are my they are my friends. 
And <laughs> a little bit of a different relation, you know, it's a little different, but love is a big healer and trust yeah. needs to be rebuilt and regenerated all the time. And certainly yeah. in a relationship, it needs, you know, as you're in a partnership, um, trust is the number one thing. So if it's for yourself, yeah. you've got to start with yourself first, just like you were saying, you've mm -hmm. got to start with yourself first and then you extend from there. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not something to take for granted, for sure. Like, how mm -hmm. do we cultivate that? How do we nourish that? And I do think it's through um, fun activities, play, art, yeah. joy, music, and also mm -hmm. <clears throat> grieving, ritual, um, maybe yeah. the more serious types of things. So yeah. that's a big question, and that's just maybe the surface. Yeah, no, I love, I love that you're going here. Um, because I totally get it. And it's something that I haven't thought about before. So I love this because this is a new awareness for me around, um, you know, even kind of coming full circle because it's something I wanted to ask you about. That was actually the third piece I forgot that when you're first sharing at the beginning of um, our discussion was you talked about you created this play, right? Mm -hmm. And you wrote it and it gave you this opportunity um, to, oh, shoot. Okay, good. Um, I. I I'm realizing Ben is trying to get on to Zoom. This is hilarious. I just want to make sure I don't log us out of our interview. If you want to keep okay. the scene open, please assign another host. Okay, whatever. I'm just going to let him deal with that. Okay. Um, so we have just like a few more minutes, I guess. Yeah, just <laughs> um, maybe a couple. Yeah. yeah. I just, I wanted to bring it back around. Okay, so what I was saying was that you had this opportunity to to take a piece of like your soul, right? It's put it in like big terms and physically manifest it in this place of art, right? Mm -hmm. And being able to, to express it in a way that felt safe. Mm -hmm. I think that is yes. what performance Safety art, mm -hmm. the performance art and like I have a um, performing background as well as like ah. a dancer and mm -hmm. You know, I performed in the show, What is Erotic Here, nice. uh, which was like a whole new level of yeah. performance. Um, but that, I believe, is a beautiful place. And I recommend it to women that are afraid to get on video mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. much because yeah. you can embody a character. Yeah. It's a lot more scary to embody yourself. Like, mm -hmm. here's who I am mm -hmm. authentically. And mm -hmm. um, I just think it's a great playground to mm -hmm. start, whether it's drawing or singing or performing. Mm -hmm. So I love that you brought that up. And I think that that helps for sure build that trust mm -hmm. muscle. Absolutely. And so what I would do, knowing what I know of your work, is as you build these amazing retreats for women and the programs that you're building, Trust is the number one thing. We have to start there. Yeah. Yeah. So using your performance background mm -hmm. is great. And I can only imagine to be in what is erotic took a whole other layer of trust, being willing to be vulnerable, yeah. um, willing to express who you are. I mean, it's a great opportunity. And the other thing I think, uh, as I reflect on certainly on the sensuous wisdom circles, when in that, in that process, part of it is witnessing other women um, being themselves and being really connected to themselves. And so sometimes it's easier for us to witness it in mm -hmm. someone else first. So, you know, we, we have different stages. So if somebody's feeling like you're, you're the leader, so you're mm -hmm. very much in your trust of who you are and trusting your knowing, trusting your guidance. Um, so demonstrating that, being in that, and mm -hmm. allowing others to witness you, and then bringing mm -hmm. voice to that witnessing so that it becomes integrated into their experience. Mm -hmm. So in other words, um, bring it into a teaching and learning format so yeah. that people can learn and be inspired. So, you know, you can talk about what does it feel like to be connected to your knowing? What does it feel like to trust? What does it sound like? What is it, um, you know, who are you when you're trusting? Mm -hmm. um, how does your day go? And then having women reflect on that for you, but then also for themselves. And yeah. what does that feel like for them? And the edges are all there. 
you know, trusting that even if you have a frog in your throat when you're talking on video, remember when you lost your voice, right? Yeah. Same idea. It doesn't matter. Your Mm -hmm. presence is what is important. And if I have to go (laughs) every so often, so what? It's okay. It's all right. And we have so much pressure um, as women, as business owners, as women in corporate. You know, I think about there were, um, I went to an event the other night and there were a lot of women uh, from the other side of the hill. And all of these women have a lot of pressure to stand up and like present, be perfect. Mm -hmm. But you know, the speaker that night was wonderful because she was funny and she made mistakes Mm -hmm. and her mic went out and, but she, (laughs) she was right on. Right. Awesome, yeah. And so that kind of brings it all back full circle, I think, to, yeah. to what you're doing and yeah. why we're having this conversation. So. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I think that's a great place to end. And I, I love that you said that um, your presence, I forget exactly what you said, but I like to say your presence is enough. Your that's presence perfect. is enough. So I think that's great. And I'm so grateful to have this conversation. I wish we didn't have to go off and we could do like a proper ending, but Ben apparently has a meeting set up and I'm now yeah, over yeah. three okay. minutes late for All him. Right. So and let's let him have his Yes, meeting. I will. And okay. we will put all the links um, to your bio and your website. And um, maybe that book that you mentioned on grief might be a fun oh, thing, yeah. resource to share I'll with people. Okay. Yeah. Um, over at jesstomlinson.com slash show dash three. So you will be episode three and we will release it soon. Thank you so much, Denise. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks.